That was Dreamland and Handle My Biz by the Vic City Soldiers. And we have one of the Vic City Soldiers on the line right now. His name is Jazz Mills. He is one of the MCs, as I already said. Yeah, and I think we might have him on the line here. Let's just see what we can do with our radio magic. Yo, Jazz Mills, can you hear me, man? I can hear you. Word, I can hear you finally. How's it going, man? Good. That's good. That's good. So, th- this joint that we just played, Handle My Biz. Yes. Uh, which verse are you on that? I uh, I was the first person. Word. What did you, what struck you about that track the first time you heard it? Like, um, the first time I I originally was gonna write it for myself, but when we we're coming to completion for the album. Uh, I decided to use it for all three of us, and I know I had a completely different setup for it, and I just kind of whipped whipped it together, and that was the outcome. It was more of a it's more of a comedic song. We tried to make it. So, like, do you find that it's easier to to work in that kind of a group dynamic and really have fun with a track like that? Oh yeah, yeah. We it, it's it's easy to have fun with music and. Like doing it with these two guys, that I've been able to write some of like the best lyrics I've ever written in my life. So that's a that's that's always dope when you can find a uh, setup like that. So how did you guys first come together as a group? Uh, well, as a group, um, Vic City Soldiers was originally a, uh, a a thing that I came up with about four years ago with my cousin Stax. Um, me and Stax kind of had a fallout, but. The idea stuck with me, and um, I joined Battleaxe Warriors, and I became a big member for it for the island. And Jeremy, he's been one of my longtime friends. I think it's like 16 years, and he was like, "Oh, let's do some music. Let's let's put some music together." And I was like, "Yeah, man, let's do it." And Shane uh, goes by Lost Boy. Uh, he was about he's a member of Bax War as well. So he was listening in on uh, us recording music and stuff, and he's like, oh, man, I want to do this kind of stuff too. So that's kind of how it came together. It happened September 2016 when we did our first track. That's sick, man. So it all just kind of came together, united through um, being part of Backs War. Yeah. So so tell me, what is it like um, being a part of the Backs War family, that Backs War community? Like, do you go out to like meetings in Vancouver and stuff did they have like big get togethers is it like a is there a Facebook group like what is what does that look like well there's definitely a Facebook group um on on Facebook it's Bax Bax Global Familia uh that's open to the public so the public can check that out um I host meetings in Victoria once a month for our Victoria division there's a division in Nanaimo that's hosted by my buddy Kevin out there who's actually a French rapper Oh, uh, word. I know Kevin. I know Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. So he's doing this thing out there. And then we got another division out in Powell River. So I kind of look after all three divisions. Uh, cool. Because I guess since you're like uh, in Victoria, and Victoria is probably the biggest city, the biggest meetings that you're kind of the biggest yeah. island guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. So is that uh, being around that community of um, fans and friends and other artists, did that inspire you to... Um, like the sound of the album as well? Uh, not necessarily. Um, Swollen Members is a big influence on, you know, the group aspect of uh, Vic City Soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we kind of try to make our own sound with it. Like, I, I, I have a slower flow. Uh, Word Master J, he's got the double times and he's quick. And then Shane, Lost Boy, he, uh, he's a punk <laughs> he's, like, he's, into, he's into punk music and stuff so like oh yeah kind of took that aspect and kind of made his own style that's really cool and i also see that you guys have this track um wrecking crew that you did with tangible two yeah. uh longtime kinetic flow listeners will know tangible two and longtime fans of island hip-hop will know tangible two as well oh, they're exactly, definitely yeah. high energy dudes while performing and um so what was it like working with those guys? Did you all get together and write? Did you all record at the same time? Uh, well, we all we all recorded separately, but um, we first encountered Tangible uh, on stage last 
May, I think, or, or July. Oh, so you caught them at like a like a like a show, like you were both performing in the same spot? Yeah, yeah, we did a show um, with a guy named Stax from Ontario. Uh, he was doing a, a Canadian tour. Um, Nanaimo was one of his stops, and Tangible got put on the bill with us. And since then, it's just been probably probably the best other group that we love to do music with. Word. Yeah, so so that's just kind of where it took off. Did you guys all kind of agree on like a like a central topic, or was it more of like a like a freestyle cipher kind of a feel? Uh, not necessarily a freestyle, but it was definitely a cipher. Wrecking Crew was just it came to my head like listening to the, the instrumental for that song, and like I was just like just go go with it, just Wrecking Crew, just write about whatever you know. We're here to take over the game, kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah, that's sick. Yeah, definitely. It it comes on in a big way. And uh, so, how many shows have you guys done now? Uh, up to date, we've done almost sixty shows. Sixty up and shows. down the island and on the mainland. No rookies. No, no. We started off as rookies for sure. Like <laughs> it was it was a crazy start. Like we didn't know what we we're doing, looking off in weird directions when we we're on stage. But now we're just intertwined with the crowd, and it's it's amazing. We like. Just, just the progression that we've had since our first show mm. is amazing. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you had along the way? Because I know uh, sometimes sound production and sound quality at a show can be tough. And how do you manage that with a group of uh, three MCs? Uh, well, sound like it, it depends on like like uh, where we're performing, right? Uh, we do a lot of shows at Upstairs Cabaret in Victoria, and like their sound is really good, and like. We know, like, our way around the stage and, like, how loud we got to be on the mic. And, like, because we were, were frequent there, upstairs knows how to keep our sound really nice. Mm. Um, shows out of town are, like, a lot different. Like, we have to do sound check and everything. Um, but sometimes the promoters that we work with don't even let, like, the local guys do sound check. Oh. So it's so kind of rough sometimes. Yeah, so you just kind of got to go, right? Yeah. Sometimes you'll find us switching mics on stage because, like, one mic will be louder than the other. And I'm a quiet person, so I always have to try and get the loudest one if that's the case. Okay, so so um, yeah, that's just kind of you. You mentioned that you were like the quiet one. So yeah. um, is there is there one person who kind of addresses the crowd more than the others, or is it kind of a group effort? We try to do it as a group, but Word Master Jay has always got the crowd crowd's attention. Word, he's the Word Master. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can he can go off freestyling for hours if you give him the chance. Uh, like just constant flowing all the time. It's crazy. That's awesome. That's that's a that's a he's hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also thinking like. What what do you guys have planned for the future? Because once you're up at the sixty show mark, like you're not planning on slowing down anytime soon. No, no, definitely not. Um, right now, we're actually in the works of trying to get a, a music grant through Factor.ca, um, hoping that will help us push our career across Canada. Mm. So, like, that's our ultimate goal: to do at least a cross Canada tour. Well, that would be a crazy trip. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's also some stuff that you could do through Creative BC. Just a little plug. Uh, Rob the Viking through the Chamber Studios has just been approved for all sorts of uh, grant funding through Creative BC. So, oh, cool. Yeah, they're definitely they're they're giving out grants to artists who want to make music here in BC. So it's also something to check out. Oh, sweet. Yeah, no, I didn't even hear about that. And I, I know Rob got in like he set up a new studio. Yeah, like, he moved his studio and. Yeah. I seen pictures on Facebook and it looks amazing. Yeah, his studio actually happens to be right next door to CHLY. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah, I, I actually like saw him on the way in, and that's that's how I learned about it. So, oh, nice. You could be one of the lucky recipients of a grant to work with Rob the Viking. That would be amazing. I'm definitely gonna look into that. Yeah, definitely. And and um, before we we get into the next track here, um, what is one of your favorite things about working with the Vic City Soldiers? Do you mean just being a part of the music, like being on stage and being able to perform for people is amazing. Like mm -hmm. I get such a good vibe off it and like seeing people 
who frequently come to our shows singing along with us, like it makes me feel real good about yeah. being an artist. That's sick, man. It's 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 all it's all a cycle. You make them feel good, they make you feel good, and you make music together. Exactly. We're and speaking of making music together, we're gonna get into it here with Wrecking Crew with the Vic City Soldiers Intangible too. It was great talking to you, Jazz Mills, and I'm sure we'll have you you. back on in the future. Yes, you will. Thanks. Peace, man. Yes, this is Wrecking Crew with Tangible 2 and the Vic City Soldiers, and we'll be back with more of the Vic City Soldiers in a little bit. Stay tuned. That was Wrecking Crew by the Vic City Soldiers and Tangible 2. Tangible 2 out of Ladysmith Big Ups to Nanaimo Ladysmith Hip Hop. And we are live right now with the man Wordmaster J. So I'm going to say a big what up to Wordmaster J. How's it going, man? What up, what up, what up? You're just kicking back tonight, having a nice relaxing night? You know, you know. Yeah, definitely, man. So so tell me a little bit about your history as a as an MC. Like, what was the first time you remember spitting bars? First time I remember spitting bars, it was, it was pretty much, hmm. Well, I was like, well, I want to try this because I was at a homeboy's house and he was freestyling. So I was like, huh. <coughs> I'm gonna try that. So I go home and I start chopping it up over this instrumental. You know, it's like when you first start out, you're not that good. So you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> I don't really want to try it again because <laughs> that sounded terrible. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, curse about that, my bad. But um, yeah, you know how it is. You kind of discourage yourself after a little bit. You're like, ah. Oh. But if you keep up with it, consistency is the key. You just kind of keep doing it and doing it and doing it. You know, you just bring yourself to a level that you want to be at, right? Mm. Word. So, <laughs> so did you, were you a freestyler first or a writer first? I was definitely a freestyler first. So what was it like transitioning from freestyling to writing? Uh, it was really different because, like, when you freestyle, you just go off the top of the dome. And you just go off in the moment, however it goes, right? Mm-hmm. But when you're writing, you got to really focus on your pronunciations, your your punchlines, and what you're trying to make a story of, right? Yeah, definitely. And and it's, it, it's hard to get a recorded freestyle that sounds as sick as the not recorded freestyle. Yeah, exactly. Like, I sit here sometimes, and I'm like, okay, I got... I want to just start going off, right? So I'll put a beat on and I'll record it. And there's a there's a ton load on SoundCloud, right? So I just like there's that setting you can just sit and record. So I'll just be there, sit there for hours, and just record freestyles, right? Yeah, that's awesome, man. And do you pull material from your freestyles to use in written tracks? Uh, at times, like if like if I can't. If I'm in there recording, right, and I have, like, most of my written, and it's, like, maybe a bar or two or, like, a bar and a half or something like that, I'll just, you know, freestyle the rest of it. Mm. That's cool, man. And so um, when you're working with Lost Boy and Jazz Mills on Vic City Soldiers joints, like, do you guys write together and freestyle together? Is there one that you guys do more together, or is it just kind of, like you guys are are doing it all well mostly we mostly just you know we just kind of go with it and have fun if we freestyle we freestyle but mostly it's all about the pen game right Mm -hmm. yeah definitely because the the pen game is is um the most important as a as a as a show basically right yeah that's exactly you want to you want to be consistent on your on your writing because you want to show the people that you are working and you are hungry and you want to get to the next level and you want to, you know what I mean? Mm. It's a fun journey. Like, from firstly starting out, the very first time I stepped on stage with the boys, it was like, okay, I'm going on stage now. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to do something I kind of dreamed about, now I'm actually living it, so this is this is a blessing, right? Totally. So, so how much time goes into um, rehearsing things? Like, do you guys have your act pretty much down to the point where you only need to rehearse it, like, maybe once before, or are you guys, before every show, kind of, like, doing, like, an hour or two rehearsal? Well, like, to be honest, I, I kind of rehearse every single day, right? I just, just get up and start doing it. Even, you got nothing to do, I just do music, right? So, right. Um, there's times where we do get together, have a nice little rehearsal session, and start writing and planning for like what we want to do for our next song and stuff like that right yeah 
That's cool. And so are you guys working on any new tracks, any new projects currently? Yeah, we are. Actually, we're in the mix of making a couple of remixes, and we're in the mix of dropping our new, well, not dropping, just, you know, putting together our new album. Ah, uh, that's cool. So lots of stuff that you're keeping close to the chest for the moment. Yeah, exactly. You know, surprises. <laughs> hey, so when you guys came out with your first project, how did you how did you launch that? How did you present yourselves as a group and how did you build up to where you are now? Um, just pretty much just just did what we did, you know, got on stage and just went wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're like we're just like, yeah, let's just keep going with this. This is a good vibe. You know what I mean? We love doing what we do and it's like it's almost like a possession. You don't you don't understand what you're doing until you're off the stage. You're like, oh, I just did this. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like you're stepping into a black hole for a second. You're like, what? Yeah, it's like time just stops for a second. And you're like, oh, this is amazing. That's sick, man. So you've noticed that a lot of your guys' growth and development has been through doing shows, right? Yeah, it's, we've done over 60 shows in the, in, the, in the past time that we've been together. So we've been together for almost two years now, right? So... Mm. and each time and every time we step on stage together we get more and more comfortable and it's it's just more and more fun right yeah definitely so it's like definitely the more comfortable you are the more louder and <laughs> crazy you're gonna be absolutely and and jazz was talking about how you guys have uh some plans for a future cross canada tour so is there any place where you think that you'd really like to perform like any city any part of the country that like you just think would be wild oh man like i've i've been to Kelowna. i never got to really experience Kelowna. i just been there in you know, one section but the hip-hop scene there is insane i hear and i always see different settings and stuff like that so it'd be cool to have a stop in Kelowna. word man and um another spot would be where else would it be? Um, Red Deer is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, it's funny that you mentioned both of those places. I used to live in Kelowna, and I was just there visiting recently. I went to a local hip hop show there. Oh uh, yeah. My buddy Strategy was performing. Strategy's got some insane stuff, and there was all sorts of dudes there. It was just a big like nice venue good sound live dj like the whole thing like definitely shows in Kelowna are a good time and the talent out there is crazy you definitely yeah, receive a warm welcome there yeah, and for uh, real. a local producer we have here marcello del caro he was involved in the hip-hop and the edm scene out in red deer and he said that the game out there is also pretty pretty insane they have you know all of the big acts come through there and i think they got enough talent out there to keep keep things a little competitive yeah exactly right keep everybody on their tippy toes that's what you want you want to see that yeah for sure and and you guys are are you um are you all from victoria originally or are you all just living there currently yeah no originally like lost boys he's from uh toronto right mm -hmm. but he came he came here a few years back and we all met through battle axe warriors it was pretty pretty kind of funny how <laughs> we all just started kicking it <laughs> we're all making it. a track one day and my buddy's like yo i want to do that i was like get on the mic man just rip it up go ahead and the kid lays down his verse in one take and i was like did you seriously just do that <laughs> like you you've never rapped before and you just laid down your verse in one take wow <laughs> yeah he's just ready to go yeah, he was in there, and he was like, he was in the zone, right? So, so mm. I was like, yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> that's that's incredible, man. That was our first track. It was called Food for Thought. Uh, that's that's that story also is some food for th thought for sure, and and so do you do you find that you're open to working with more and more people as you grow, or do you find that it's kind of gone the opposite oh. way where you want to work more with the group? Definitely. No, like you want to work as much as possible with everybody. You want to you want to network. You want to get yourself out there, right? Because when if I work with a different artist, I'm still representing my team, right? I'm Word Master J from the Vic City Soldiers. So I'm doing a collaboration with one of my homies, is, um, and then I'm doing another collaboration with one of my other friends, right? So at the same time, I'm still I'm still representing the team. Yeah, exactly. And you're and you're 
showing off for the team in places where they may not know about the big city soldiers. Oh, yeah, exactly. That, and that's what you want, right? And that's why I like Instagram. Instagram is cool, man. <laughs> you can drop a, a freestyle video and just post it, and people from wherever will like it, right? Yeah, exactly, because it's, it's, it's so shareable, right? Yeah, exactly, and that's, that's what you want. You want networking, because the more people share your stuff and you share other people's stuff, and, you know, it's like, hey, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, but at the same time, we're a hip-hop community. We want to grow, right? We want to go to the next level. We want to make good music. We want to present a good message, right? Yeah, totally. We want you guys to, we want everyone to enjoy and vibe and feel that. You want to be like, yeah, that's that's dope. <laughs> yeah for sure man and i find that like especially in the realm of instagram like freestyle videos are really popular but yeah you know there's something to be said for the old-fashioned audio recording freestyle you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah yeah but just rough edited unedited rough raw copy <laughs> yeah totally bad so get her, get her done <laughs> yeah well, we're about to get her done man we're gonna get raw on the kinetic flow today you ready to spit a freestyle man yeah let's do this word i'm gonna hook you up with the beat and you can just set in whenever you want man here you go I was digging it, but yeah, I was just cut off. I was holding up. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'ma be fit on the beat, you know what I'm doing when I'm in the street Cause I be fit on like I be a G, cause I be obviously I I be puffing on the corner till the day I die You know what I'm right, I'm excited every time I rhyme I'ma be climbing the mountain, you know what I be shouting Hip hop, yeah that's what I preach, never gonna stop I be representing like Big pot, cause I be the 91 You know I'm rhyme, son, realize that I be high constantly Yo I be coughing, never stopping, yeah that's just me I'm the MC for Victoria, warrior, put it back on the map, and that is that, yeah, yeah. Who the heck am I? That's that. Fact, you know I'll be fine, that's that. You know what I'm reacting, I'm never stopping, I'm going back, and I gotta get my plaque, hip-hop. Uh, uh, it's hip-hop. Yeah, work. Master J coming to place with the best Okay, you know what I'm feeling like I just get some stress Get this off of my chest now Cause this music's what I'm living for You know what, I be so proud, uh Yeah Word, word, word Master J on the kinetic flow That was some shit, man You got more for the people I do, I do Set it All right, hold up Man, I'm about to make a sequel, I got more for the people Cause you know what, I just be lethal, I be like, okay I'ma be earning that, yo, I burn that shit, that's tight Cause you know that I be wicked every day in my life But beyond this mic, I be spitting through my phone I'm on a live radio call up in my home Oh, I'ma have to survive, yo, I be twitching I be thinking every day I'll be high Shout out to my boy Switch, you know what this is I just got to say, I got to play the biz And that's it, I be lit, can't even stop I'm seeing the arm of the clock Cause I be popping, okay, alright 24-7, hip-hop is my life Music is life, that's the right Ooh, shit Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it oh is God. This what is what up, the man? people tuned in for yeah. Yo, man, Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> word, man, word, Master J. It's been good chatting with you. Man, um, you too. Unfortunately, we do not have Lost Boy with us tonight. He got lost somewhere along the way. Yeah, much love, Lost Boy. I love you, brother. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna we're gonna send it out with a couple more Vic City Soldiers tracks. We got MPD featuring Arez and In the Game coming up. Thank you very yeah. much for joining me, Wordmaster J, and I hope to Thank have you, you guys back sometime soon. You know it. Much love. Word. Peace, Word. man. Peace, dog. You heard it here first, live and direct on the Kinetic Flow. That was the Vic City Soldiers. Mad love to Jazz Mills, Wordmaster J, and Lost Boy. Yeah, we're going to get into it here. MPD featuring a res on the Kinetic Flow. (music) 
That was MPD by the Vic City Soldiers featuring a res. And we got In the Game coming up next. But ladies and gentlemen, we have a surprise special guest. He found us his way to us tonight here on the Kinetic Flow. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome Lost Boy. How's it going, Lost Boy? It's going good. How's it going with you? Oh, good, good. Having a great night talking to all of you guys. So, uh, so tell me. What is your favorite part about working in, in a hip-hop group as opposed to working as a solo act? Um, I actually wouldn't know. I'd never really been into music until we started Vic City Soldiers two years ago. So everything to me is all new every single time that we do it. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely interesting. I think I've only performed one solo song and not the same energy as i was expecting you know with the two guys backing me up so mm. and, and and what's it like when all three of you are just on and vibing like can you describe that feeling of being on stage uh you you kind of feel like you're on top of the world you know um i battle my anxiety before every single show you know i always think you know you know i can't get up there i'm gonna mess up i'm never gonna do this again but then the boys come through and they hype me up and as soon as we hit that stage and i hear that first beat play everything drowns out everything goes quiet and it's just the three of us up there you know i barely i don't even see the crowd mm. through the lights most of the time so that definitely makes it easier but when the three of us are up there, nothing else matters. It's just kill that show and then on to the next one. <laughs> That's sick, man. So were you also, what was your, your battle with those feelings when you first got on the mic? Um, for me, mainly, it was uh, proving myself in an element that, you know, hasn't been a part of my entire life. Like, I've always listened to hip-hop, but, you know, my main focus was metal and punk rock. So for me, coming into this and coming from that kind of writing style was a big adjustment for me. And I wasn't sure how people were going to take it. So I got to try to give a little and take a little as well and try to make it all into one good set for everybody. So I was not sure people were going to take me seriously just based on, you know, looks alone. Right, because that is, image is a huge part of hip-hop these days, especially with different genres of hip-hop. Like, like every trap rapper has that distinctive look, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, you know, honestly, if you, if you were to transition from any genre to any other genre, I think punk rock and rap are kind of, you know, they're at least cousins. Yeah, and, and uh, I've actually got a lyric where I say punk and hip-hop are one and the same. I see it's like it's the same voice of the streets just for, told from a different side of the story, like a different group, but there's a lot of elements and attitudes that I found similar. You know, that's why the transition was a little easier than someone who's diving into something they know nothing about. Mm. So it kind of begs the question, have you done any tracks that have kind of more of a, a punk rock sound to them? And if not, would you like to do that sometime in the future? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I, I've actually talked to a few different artists that we've met along our way in the last two years who are looking to do a, a live, like, kind of punk hip-hop crossover. I'm also looking into doing a ska crossover, get some uh, brass instruments and stuff like that in there and just kind of bring a, a new energy to our set kind of thing. Uh, that's cool. So you're a fan more of live instrumentation then? Mm -hmm. So I just think you know when you when you can actually see the music being performed, it brings a different uh, experience to the people who are there watching it. Mm. Makes them feel more connected with with it than you know just hearing it be being played through speakers. At least you know that's through my experience. Yeah, totally. It adds another element, and also like performing with all of those other people adds that much more energy, right? Exactly. And so did you guys work with a specific producer for this album that you just did? Or or what was the process of recording this album? Um, the first two songs on the album, we actually recorded in Jasper's apartment building. Um, and then we hooked up with our homie uh, Eddie Vocals at a Lyric Studios here in Victoria. And uh, once we decided that we were going to do the album and we got the backing from our manager, Sean, uh, we basically just went down and laid it down as fast as we could. Mm, that's sick, man. Uh, and, and do you do you plan on working with any sort of dedicated producer in the future, or is that kind of just something you're going to leave up to chance? Oh, well, right now we're well, we're still learning as we go, you know. And uh, when it comes to bigger producers, it uh, it costs 
a lot, right? And we're we're all still trying to maintain what we're doing at our regular jobs and stuff. So um, it's definitely a plan down the road. But for right now, we're just trying to keep it a little more in the price range until you know easier means come come our way. Yeah, totally. And and hip hop is an investment. I mean, you guys have an album behind you, and you have sixty shows. If you're Looking at music as a business, you guys can now apply to bigger shows and work with bigger producers over time, right? Exactly. Because you kind of have uh, a good fan base. Do you guys have like merch or anything like that that people can buy off of you? Oh, yeah. We have plenty of merch. We have uh, men's and women's tank tops, T-shirts. Uh, we've got a couple of hoodies that we've done a few runs of with some different logo styles. Oh, nice, We've got man. CDs and stickers, and we're looking into expanding our merch as well. Totally. Merch is like half the battle, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely half the battle. Every band's got a sick shirt. Yeah. But uh, um, do you find that like if you travel long distances, do you bring the merch as well? Or do you do you make that judgment call where you maybe leave the merch at home? Oh, we bring the merch to at pretty much every single show that we do. Even if we, you know, we only sell one T-shirt or one CD, that's still... You know, it's still getting out there. People are still wearing it, taking us on the Instagram and everything. So it's it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Definitely, man. So what what kind of gear do you guys bring with you? Like, what does what does a trip up to Nanaimo or a trip up to Courtney look like for you guys? Uh, we pretty much uh, we pick out our you know whatever clothes we're gonna wear for the actual show, and then uh, you know everything else. It's just basic stuff. It's like bunch of buddies go on and just out of town for the weekend ah uh, that's sick so do you have any any favorite moments from the road that you want to share with us uh yeah there's uh <laughs> there's definitely a lot of memories um i think one of my favorite ones is when we were up in powell river um the hotel and the venue were attached in the same building and it's uh one of the most haunted hotels in western canada Oh, and so we snuck up to the third floor after we'd been partying after the show and everything and uh we're all using a ouija board this one time and jeremy's wife got really excited and she's like you gotta make sure you have to say goodbye or it's gonna screw you over and she's psyching everybody up and then the thing actually moved and she freaked out got up and just bolted out and um a bunch of the dolls got knocked over and everyone was freaking out thinking we were going to leave Powell River haunted. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've we've got a lot more stories but not really radio friendly and most of them are, you know, alcohol hey, involved. Hey, that's fair. That's fair, man. That's a nice radio friendly story. And I'm <laughs> sure as, as you guys continue to do shows, you'll have a few more radio friendly ones in the back. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, word, man. So where can people hear your music? Like, I know we can get you on YouTube, Spotify, Google Play. Is that everywhere that you're available, or can can we find you elsewhere? No, we're pretty much on every platform at this point now. Awesome. Do you have one field where you're, like, really active, like, or is it equal across all platforms of social media? I think uh, I think Spotify seems to be our our biggest one right now we we're getting more monthly listeners every week that goes by so it's it's really cool to see how fast it's growing and where people are listening from we've got some people over in australia and new zealand that are listening in right so it's, it's a really cool feeling oh that's awesome man and if people want to keep up with you guys and what you're doing and where your next shows are where should people follow you uh definitely hit up our facebook page that's where the majority of our information goes first Mm, definitely so make sure that you're following the Vic City Soldiers on Facebook it's spelled exactly how it sounds you can listen to them on Spotify YouTube Google Play any platform but definitely listen to them on Spotify and hit them up on Facebook word yo thank you for joining us tonight Lost Boy thank you we're gonna send it out with this track in the game I hope to talk to you guys very soon and the next time you're up in Nanaimo Come and pay us a visit. Maybe maybe we can do something. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds We're, good, man. Thank you. Word. Take care, Lost Boy. Yeah, peace out, brother. There you have it. That was the Vic City Soldiers on the Connect Flow. Jazz Mills, Wordmaster J, and Lost Boy. You're definitely going to want to check them out and pay attention to them because I think these guys have a promising future. And, you know, they're going to be in the game 
for quite a while. You see what I did there? Yeah, we got In the Game by the Vic City Soldiers coming up on the Kinetic Flow. And then after this, we got a solid hour block of hip-hop. You're not going to want to miss that. Finely curated selections after the ads. This has been Shakes. This has been the Kinetic Flow. I will see you guys next week.